Hi everyone, JB from Just TCG. Today we are carrying on the Shin Hair Warrior campaign in Hex Shards of Fate. Last time we defeated the Army of Myth, this time we are getting a quest from Wyatt. Now, unfortunately, I'm, we're joining in halfway through a conversation because the OBS failed to record properly. So here we are. Uh, so Wyatt's just nearly stepped on us despite us not being that short. And then he goes, oh, you're the ones at Crayburn Castle. That uh, you're the, yeah, the did the thing and I was like yes I did the thing huh, talk louder can't hear a thing when you spend your life in a construction site you stop hearing the demolitions after a while and everything else for that matter say weren't you the one who dealt with that whole situation at Crayburn Castle that big sapphire that fell from the, from the sky I see my fame precedes me as bizarre as those Coyotal are they got allies that are even more annoying the humans to be specific for centuries those daft chumps have been a giant pain in our look out what Sorry about that, that board above your head was shifting. Thought it might come crashing down and squish you. Looks like it's stable for now. Sorry about that. What was I talking about? Uh, humans. Ah, that's right. From what I hear, a bunch of them have been making a nuisance of themselves. Where are these nuisances? An outpost called Fort Romor. It's small but strategically located between Arden and Underworld controlled territory. We've been fighting over that place for years. I'm surprised the building's still standing. What's going on at Fort Romor? Rumour has it that the necrotic that were guarding the fort were driven out by the humans. They suffer quite a lot of casualties though, and the fort is being held by a thin force of wounded stragglers. Wounded, you say? Interesting. Fort Romor is beyond the masked army, east of the Vale of Oberon. Go there now and take care of the annoying humans. If you can get to Romor or Quicklike before their reinforcements arrive, perhaps you could take it back from the underworld. I think the dwarves are supposed to be like Geordie or Scottish, but I can't do their accents so I'm not going to insult them. Consider it done, accept quest. Cool. In that case... Yeah. In that case, what we're going to do is go back to the overworld. And find Fort Romor, wherever that may be. So we're going to have a quick scour of the map. Fort Romor, Vale of Oberon. Let's go to the Vale of Oberon. Explore. State your purpose. I'm travelling to Fort Romor. What business do you have at Fort Romor? They need reinforcements. That's me. Very well. You shall be given temporary authorization to proceed. Try not to get killed and eaten. Ha. Huh. Interesting. Lena Grotto. A shroomkin looks up at you with a vacant smile. Do you speak? The shroomkin shakes its head. It points to its cap, which is piled with various offerings. None of which are good for me because we're looking for wild or blood. Ethereal healer. Live drone for the start of the game. This is in your deck. Game one health. No, thank you. Form ranks. Quick action troops. You control the show class with you. Get plus one plus one. Not bad. Dandelion Fairy. Two threshold, four drop. Flight. When this deals damage to an opposing champion, a random troop that champions control gets defensive until this leaves play. I think I'll just like the form ranks there. Uh, no experience though. Travel to Fort Romor. It is a dungeon. Okay. So let's have a quick look at the, at the deck. Make sure I'm happy with it. So yeah, the deck is pretty much the same as last time. I didn't make any changes. The armor, as as you may remember, we got Healthy Heartblade, which makes Sora better. Deploy, gain free health, draw a card on top of all her other excellent abilities. Uh, but apart from that, nothing's really changed. Silhouette of a partially ruined fort. Into Fort Romore dungeon we go. Fort Romore sits in a wide clearing surrounded by a thick ancient forest. A sneak through the trees, approaching the fort's gates with caution. We are a sneaky, evil Japanese runny, runny babbit, bunny rabbit. Sneak through the trees, approaching the fort's gates with caution. You pick your way through the brush, keeping your footsteps light and silent. You pause to listen for voices and watch the fort's battlements for movement, but you detect nothing. Continue moving towards the gate. Fort Romor has seen better days. The gate, as well as the attached wooden perimeter, are heavily damaged from recent skirmishes. It is unnervingly quiet. Pull open the gate. Some of the buildings within the interior of the fort lie in ruins. The oily smoke of fires from the recent battles here sting your eyes. Three of the primary structures are still standing. The barracks to the north, the command post to the northwest, and the stables to the northeast. Okay. Looks like we're going to the gate. Somehow the gate still stands, those sections of the wall look ready to collapse. Okay. 
So we've got the command post, the barracks, and the stables. We will do these in order from left to right. So let's do the command post first. We have a bold one here, I see. To walk rashly into the command centre of Arden Operations and expect to walk out alive is almost commendable in its recklessness. Uh, spare me, most of your command is dead. But not all, Shinhair, not all. I still have a sword and you certainly have some guts that I can drive it into. Oh, there are more humans alive here? Tell me where they are hiding. Reinforcements are marching on this fort as we speak. Fort Caradon shall never again fall into the despicable clutches of the underworld. I might die here, Shinhair, but so will you, this is certain. So it looks like we're taking on Commander Hawthorne. With Bulwark of Faith, basic, 2 Diamond Threshold, 3, you get Armor 1. Inspire Courage. When you gain health, target cleric you control with the lowest uh, attack gets plus one, plus one. Okay. Okay, let's look at our opening hand. We've got a Kill Blade. We've got Blood Bloodbearer. Bloodbearer? Bloodbearer and Moon Arrow Magus. We will keep this hand. Okay. There's a Shroom Shore on two as well. We'll start with the Kill Blade of the Milky Eye. And then end the turn. The lethality of Killblade makes him really good. In my opinion, anyway. There's a 1-3. Ardent troops in all zones have cost minus 1. That needs to die in that case. Sorry, this just can't afford... I can't afford to let something that has a cost reduction live, I don't think. We'll then... Play out the Blood Bearer and the Moon Arrow Umagus. Ooh, he's stuck. He's stuck on two shards. Two resources even. We'll attack for three. Put him down to 11. We'll play out a Shroom Shaw. Thanks to the Shroom Mask, remember. It gets Death Cry, run of Shin Hair, and your hand gets minus two. No Shin Hairs in our hand yet. But we seem to be doing quite well. There's another blood shard. Okay. So we have more charges for battle again. Looks good. We'll hit for four. Put him down to seven. Okay. Still not playing anything. It's not always this easy. I promise. Uh, but we'll just go to combat. Attack with everything again. And then we'll just finish off with battle. Deals three. Uh, not much more to say, really. Down goes Commander Hawthorne. Wow! And there's level five, 150 gold, 100 experience. The Commander Hawthorne slumps to the floor. The human command post is quiet for now. A loose jumble of parchments are spread out across the commander's desk, rummaged through the clutter of documents. Most of the documents seem to involve preparations and strategies for the recent human assault. One parchment near the top of the pile catches your eye. Judging by the fresh ink on the mostly intact paper, you guess this is that this letter arrived very recently. Read the parchment. Commander Hawthorne, I have received your urgent plea for assistance. I served for a time at Fort Carradon. I recognise how important this location is for maintaining supply lines to armed forces pushing the underworld territory. It is crucial to wrest the fort from the enemy's grasp permanently. Continue. From what I understand, whilst Fort Caradon was under the control of the Necrotic, they renamed it Fort Romor and raised their own flag on the battlements. This is a desecration, an insult to noble King Caradon XIV, for whom the fort was originally named. Continue. The land to the south of the fort still bear the scars of the skirmishes those diamond-eyed filth launched from their fort. There is no doubt they will attempt another assault. In fact, I assume that by the time you've read this, they already have. It just so happens that the other lords of the Triumvirate, a uh, Triumvirate? Triumvirate? Are here in Wren's Citadel on another matter entirely. It is most fortuitous that I received your entreaty when it when I did, for I have discussed the matter with Lord Adam and Lord Benjamin, and they agree that Fort Caradon direly needs to support you request. As soon as I dispatch this missive, the three of us shall mount up and ride to the fort with urgent haste. 
Lord Benjamin should arrive first as he is leading the strike of flying forces that shall attack the fort lot from the air. Lord Alexander will lead the second wave consisting mostly of noble of mobile infantry that will move quickly and penetrate the outer perimeter of the fort before the enemy has a chance to respond. I will arrive last with the bulk of the ardent forces. Make courage your shield and conviction your sword. We are coming, Lord Adam. Okay, so with level five, we got we can't update our talents, so ignore that. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. Check us out on social media as well. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, links in the description below. In the meantime, though, I've been JB for Just TCG. This has been the Hex Shards of Fate Shinhair Warrior Campaign, episode 13. And I'll see you in the next one.